St. Finbar's Cathedral Irish R.D. Glenaugh Finbar is a Gothic Revival Three Spire Cathedral in the city of Cork, Ireland. It belongs to the Church of Ireland and was completed in 1879. The cathedral is located on the south side of the River Lee, on ground that has been a place of worship since the 7th century, and is dedicated to Finbar of Cork, patron saint of the city. It was once in the Diocese of Cork, it is now one of the three cathedrals in the Church of Ireland Diocese of Cork, Cloyne, and Ross, in the ecclesiastical province of Dublin. Christian use of the site dates back to a 7th century monastery and was, according to tradition, founded by Finbar of Cork. During the medieval period, the site underwent successive wars, waves of church building and damage. Around 1536, during the Protestant Reformation, the cathedral became part of the established church, later known as the Church of Ireland. The previous building was constructed in the 1730s, but was widely regarded as plain and featureless. The cathedral's demolition and rebuild was commissioned in the mid-19th century by an Anglican church intent on strengthening its hand after the reforms of penal law. Work began in 1863, and resulted in the first major commission for the Victorian architect William Burgs, who designed most of Finbar's architecture, sculpture, stained glass, mosaics and interior furniture. St. Finbar's foundation stone was laid in 1865. The cathedral was consecrated in 1870 and the limestone spires completed by October 1879. The cathedral is mostly built from local stone sourced from Little Island and Fairmoy. The exterior is capped by three spires two on the west front and above where the transept crosses the nave. Many of the external sculptures, including the gargoyles, were modeled by Thomas Nichols. The entrances contain the figures of over a dozen biblical figures, capped by a tympanum showing a resurrection scene. History Finbar of Cork The church grounds are located south of the River Lee on Holy Island, on one of the many inlets forming the Great Marsh of Munster Cork at Mornam Oman. St. Finbar's is on the site of at least two previous church buildings, each dedicated to Finbar of Cork, patron saint of Cork City, and the founder of the monastic hermitage of Gau Jain Barra. Finbar was born in about 550. He was, by legend, given Gau Jain Barra as a place of contemplation, and visited Cork City to lay the foundation stones for the one true Christian faith. By legend, after Finbar died his remains were brought to Cork to be enclosed in a shrine located on the site of today's cathedral. Archaeological evidence suggests the first site at Finbar's probably dates from the 7th century, and consisted of a church and round tower which survived until the 12th century, after which it fell into neglect, or was destroyed during the Norse invasions. Medieval and 18th century churches A 1644 reference to the site notes that in one of the suburbs of Cork Cork there is an old tower 10 or 12 feet in circumference, and more than 100 feet high, believed to have been built by St. Bariel Finbar. The building was badly damaged in 1690 during the Siege of Cork, after which only the steeple remained intact, due to an outbreak of fire and the impact of a 24-pound shot from Elizabeth Ford in nearby Barrack Street. The cannonball was rediscovered during the 1865 demolition and is now on display in the cathedral. The church was demolished in 1735 and replaced the same year by a smaller building, as part of a wider phase of citywide construction and renovation. Only the earlier spire was retained for the new building. The older part of this church was described in 1862 as Doric in style, attached to a featureless modern tower with an ill-formed spire. The building was widely considered to be poorly designed. The Dublin builder described it as a shabby apology for a cathedral which has long disgraced Cork, while the Parliamentary Gazetteer of Ireland judged it a plain, massive, dull, tasteless, oblong pile, totally destitute of what is usually regarded as cathedral character, and possessing hardly a claim to any sort of architectural consideration. It was demolished in 1865. 19th century building. In April 1862, the Church of Ireland, in pursuit of a larger, more attractive cathedral, and determined to reassert its authority in response to a resurgent Catholicism, initiated a competition for a replacement building, which became the commission for the first cathedral to be built in the British Isles since London St. Paul's. The following February, the designs of the architect William Burgs, then 35, were declared the winner of the competition to build the new cathedral. Burgs disregarded the £15,000 budget, and produced a design that he estimated would cost twice as much. Despite the protestations of fellow competitors, it won. His diary records his reaction, got cork. Dash while cathedral accounts mention a payment of £100 as prize money. The foundation stone was laid on January 12, 1865, the unfinished cathedral was consecrated in 1870, and the spires topped out in 1879. Bergs used earlier unrealized designs for the exterior, 
including those intended for the Crimea Memorial Church, Istanbul, St. John's Cathedral, Brisbane and elevations for Lille Cathedral. The main obstacle was economics. Despite the efforts of fundraisers, Cork was unable to afford a large cathedral. Bergs partially alleviated this by designing a three-spired exterior which enhanced the size of the building to viewers. He realized early on the build would vastly exceed the money the city had raised. The superiority of his design was recognized by the Bishop of Cork, John Gregg, who supported Bergs and lobbied for additional funding. Gregg was instrumental in sourcing additional money, including local merchants such as William Crawford of the Crawford Brewing family and Francis Wise, a local distiller. The final total was significantly over £100,000. Bergs, assured by the efforts of Gregg, was unconcerned. Gregg died before the completion of the project. In his place, his son Robert continued his father's support, and in 1879 ceremoniously placed the final stone on the eastern spire. By then the contractors estimated that the build was nearing its completion, with only a number of pre-designed stained glass fittings left to be installed. In the future the whole affair will be on its trial and, the elements of time and cost being forgotten, the result only will be looked at. The great questions will then be, first, is this work beautiful and, secondly, have those to whom it was entrusted, done it with all their heart and all their ability. January 1877 Letter from Bergs to Gregg The cathedral holds the book of estimates prepared for the decoration of the West Front. Nichols was paid £1,769 for the modeling, and Robert MacLeod £5,153 for the carving. Bergs took 10% for the design, more than his usual 5%, apparently due to his high level of personal involvement. Its construction took seven years before the first service was held in 1870. During the first building phase, three firms of contractors were employed, owned by, chronologically, Robert Walker, Gilbert Coburn and John Delaney who eventually completed the construction of the spires in 1879. Building, carving and decoration continued into the 20th century, long after Berg's death in 1881, including the marble paneling of the aisles, the installation of the rear dust and side choir walls, and the 1915 construction of the chapter house. St. Finbar's is described by the architectural historians David Lawrence and Ann Wilson as undoubtedly Berg's greatest work in ecclesiastical architecture, with an interior that is overwhelming and intoxicating. Through his ability, careful leadership of his team, artistic control, and by vastly exceeding the intended budget, Berg's produced a building which, though not much larger than a parish church, has been described as a cathedral becoming such a city and one which posterity may regard as a monument to the Almighty's praise. 20th and 21st centuries Mindful that the cathedral was unlikely to be finished in his lifetime, Berg's produced comprehensive plans for its decoration and furnishing, recorded in his Book of Furniture and Book of Designs. At the end of the 20th century, a major restoration of the cathedral, costing £5 million, was undertaken. This included the reinstatement and restoration of the twin trumpets held by the Resurrection Angel which had been vandalized in 1999. The restoration program also saw the cleaning, repointing and repair of the exterior of the building, including the recarving of some of Berg's gargoyles, where repair proved impracticable. The cathedral's heating system was also replaced, when it was found to be damaging the intricate mosaic floor. In 2006, Lawrence and Wilson published the first detailed study of the cathedral's history and architecture. The cathedral is one of the three cathedrals of the Anglican Diocese of Cork, Cloyne, and Ross. Notable interments in the graveyard include those of Archbishop William Lyon died 1617, Richard Boyle died 1644, and in a family vault, the First Lady Freemason, Elizabeth Aldworth died circa 1773-1775. Exterior Architecture The cathedral's style is Gothic Revival, Berg's preferred period which he used for his own home, the Tower House, in London. He reused elements of the unsuccessful designs he had earlier produced for competitions for cathedrals at Lille and Brisbane. The shell of the building is mostly limestone, sourced from near Cork, with the interior walls formed from stone brought from Bath. The red marble came from Little Island, the purple-brown stone from Fermoy. Each of the three spires supports a Celtic cross, a reference to St. Patrick, seen as a foundational ancestor by both Irish Catholics and Protestants. This inclusion was an implicit statement of national identity but was against Berg's wishes. His initial design included weather vanes, a choice rejected by the building committee, who, according to the historian Antoine O'Callaghan, wanted the church to retain the continuity with the one true faith of the ancient past. The spires had a troubled construction, it was a difficult build from a technical point of view, and thus expensive to fund. The cost reached £40,000 early in the build, 
with a further £60,000 spent by the time the spires were in place. Along the way, a number of subcontractors were hired and dismissed. The contract was eventually completed by the court builder John Delaney, hired in May 1876. By the end of the following year the main and two ancillary spires were complete. Sculpture An 1881 estimate by the local stonemason MacLeod suggests that Bergs provided around 844 sculptures, of which around 412 were for the interior. The total of some 1,260 sculptures include 32 gargoyles, each with different animal heads. Bergs oversaw nearly all aspects of the design, headquartered in his office in Buckingham Street and on numerous side visits. Most modern scholars agree that his overarching control over the design of the architecture, statuary, stained glass and internal decorations, led to the cathedral's unity of style. He considered sculpture as an indispensable attribute of architectural effect and, at St. Finn Bars, believed he was engaged upon a work which has not been attempted since the west front of Wells Cathedral. In the designs for the pieces decorating the cathedral, Bergs worked closely with Thomas Nichols, who constructed each figure in plaster, and with MacLeod and local stonemasons, who carved almost all of the sculptures in situ. Berg's designs for the western façade were based on medieval French iconography. He considered this front to be the most important exterior feature as it would be lit by the setting sun and thus the most dramatic. The theme is the Last Judgment, with representations of the Twelve Apostles bearing instruments of their martyrdom, the wise and the foolish virgins, the resurrection of the dead and the beasts of the evangelists. The gilded copper resurrection angel facing eastwards on the main spire is locally the cathedral's most iconic feature, and colloquially known as the Goldy Angel. It was designed by Bergs and erected in 1870 free of charge as his gift to the city, in recognition of Cork's willingness to fund his original design, and positioned in place of an intended wrought iron cross. The imagery of the tympanum is taken from the Book of Revelation, with the divine on the upper register, and mortals below. It shows an angel, accompanied by John the Evangelist, measuring the temple in Jerusalem, while beneath them the dead rise from their graves. Of these sculptures, the Victorian critic Charles Eastlake, writing in A History of the Gothic Revival, considered that no finer examples of decorative sculpture have been produced during the revival. Bergs found it difficult to realize some of his original images for the sculptures and stained glass panels, a number of contained frontal nudes, including the designs for the creation of the planets, the figures of Adam and Eve, Christ in glory, our Lord as King crucified, the dead rising from their graves, and the welcoming angels. In August 1868, some Protestant committee members, led by the Chancellor, George Webster, rejected the use images of the naked human body in ecclesiastical iconography, especially in images of Christ, and forced Bergs to provide cloth designs, modesty providing loincloths, for strategically placed foliage or books. In frustration Bergs wrote, I am sorry to see Puritanism so rampant in Cork, I wish we could transplant the building to England. His revised designs were reviewed in April and May 1869, but were again rejected. Both Greg and the Dean, Arthur Edwards supported Bergs, and moved the decision from the General Committee to a select vestry subcommittee. Although Webster continued to object, the modified designs were finally approved. Interior Plan and Elevation The cathedral's plan is conventional, the west front is opened by three entrance doors leading to the nave, with internal vaulting, arcade, triforium and clerestory, rising to a timber roof. Beyond the nave, the pulpit, choir, bishop's throne and altar end in an ambulatory. The small floor plan drew criticism both at the time and in later years. The building is relatively short at 180 feet length, but contains all of the traditional elements of a cathedral of much greater size. A contemporary critic, Robert Rolt Brash, wrote, The effect of this is to make the building look exceedingly short, and disproportionately high. Although modest in size, the compact design makes the most of the small footprint. The three spires allow the illusion of greater interior space. Main Features Bergs designed the majority of the interior, including the mosaic pavement, the altar, the pulpit and bishop's throne. The narrow and unusually high marble nave, from red and puce stone, is supported by large columns supporting the central tower and spire. The exterior gives the impression of a large structure, which is at odds with the reduced size of the interior, where the choir, sanctuary and ambulatory take up almost half of the floor space. The interior is filled with color, most especially from the stained glass windows. This aspect of the interior is in marked contrast to the uniform and austere gray of the exterior. The cylindrical pulpit is located near the entrance and was completed in 1874, but not painted until 1935. Like the baptismal font, it is placed on four sculpted legs. 
It contains five stone relief figures, assumed to be the four evangelists, and Paul the Apostle sitting on an upturned pagan altar, and a winged dragon below the reading stand. The baptismal font is located near the entrance. Its ledge is decorated with a carving of the head of John the Baptist. The font's bowl is of cork red marble, and supported by a stem, also red marble, a marble shaft of sculpted capitals, and an octagonal base. Brass lettering reads We are buried with him by baptism into death. The lectern reading desk is made of solid brass, from a design Bergs had originally intended for Lille Cathedral. It is decorated with the heads of Moses and King David. There is a Heroes Column War Memorial by the choir, at the Dean's Chapel. It contains the names of 400 men from the dioceses killed in battle during the First World War. A processional cross, completed in 1974 by Patrick Pye, is located in front of the Dean's Chapel. The 46-foot Great Oak Throne of the Cork Diocese's Bishop was installed in 1878, alongside a statue of Finbar of Cork and a kneeling angel. Stained Glass Bergs conceived the iconographical scheme for the stained glass windows, designed the individual panels for the each of the 74 windows, and oversaw every stage of their production. According to Maurice Carey, in consequence, the windows have a consistent cohesive style and follow a logical sequence in subject matter. The panels were cartooned by H. W. Lonsdale and manufactured in London between 1868 and 1869 by William Gualbert Saunders, who worked in Berg's office before forming his own firm of stained glass makers. Doctrinal objections to some of the figures, particularly of Christ, lead to a delay of four years, with their eventual installation between 1873 and 1881. Four windows remain incomplete. Lonsdale's cartoons are kept at the cathedral. The impact created by all these glowing, colored religious images is overwhelming and intoxicating. To enter St. Finbar's Cathedral is an experience unparalleled in Ireland and rarely matched anywhere. David Lawrence writing on the stained glass windows of St. Finbar's Cathedral. Many of the figures relate to Christian iconography, and echo those in the tympanum, including, in the ambulatory a window showing God as the King of Heaven overlooking the evangelists Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In the panel, Matthew takes human form, Mark is depicted as a lion, Luke as an ox, while John takes the form of an eagle. As elsewhere in the cathedral, the illustrations can be divided between the divine, wise and foolish, the scheme begins and ends with two rose windows, at the west front and south transept respectively. The west rose window shows God as the Creator resting on a rainbow and in the act of blessing. He is surrounded by eight compartments, each inspired by the scenes from Book of Genesis, beginning with the creation of light, and ending with the birth of Eve, and Adam naming the animals. The south transept rose window, known as the Heavenly Hierarchies, places Christ the King in the center, with the compartments containing a series of angels, archangels and cherubim. Separate glass sheets containing building tools are placed between each angelic compartment. The nave windows contain signs of the zodiac. Each lancet by the arcade contains a grisai panel. These scenes are mostly from the Old Testament, while those from the transepts onward are of prophets who foretold Christ's coming, or from the New Testament. The clear story panels above the high altar depict Christ straining from his cross alongside his mother, John, the three Marys and various disciples. The windows around the ambulatory include scenes from the life of Christ, culminating in a representation of heaven at worship from the Book of Revelation. Pipe organ The organ was built in 1870 by William Hill Sons. It consisted of three manuals, over 4,500 pipes and 40 stops. The main organ utilized a tubular pneumatic action, with tracker action for the other two manuals. It was in place for the cathedral's grand opening on St. Andrew's Day, 1870, and positioned in the West Gallery but moved to the north transept in 1889, to improve acoustics, maximize space, and avoid its interference with the view of the windows. That year, a 14-foot pit was dug in the floor beside the nave, as the new location for the organ. Its maintenance has been one of the most expensive part of the cathedral's upkeep. It was overhauled in 1889 by the Cork firm, T. W. Maggie, who added three new stops. The organ was moved from the West Gallery balcony down to a pit in the north transept, where it sits today. Most of the choir organ is housed in an enclosure attached to the console, the lid of which can be raised or lowered electrically by the organist. The next major overhaul was in 1906 by Helle Company of Plymouth, who added a fourth manual the solo. By this stage, the action of the organ was entirely pneumatic. In 1965-1966 J.W. Walker Sons Limited of London overhauled the soundboards, installed the new console with electro-pneumatic action, and lowered the pitch. By 2010 the organ's electrics were unreliable. 
Trevor Crow was employed to reconstruct and increase the number of pipes, and make tonal enhancements, including a 32 extension to the pedal trombone. The project cost 1.2 million euros and took three years to complete.